It's coming. Okay, he's breathing. I'll direct them in. Jason, do you know where you are? AJ. Why? What about AJ? Jason? Jason, don't leave me out. Come on, Jason. Jason is suffering from a concussion. He should uh, regain consciousness in two or three hours. Well, what if he doesn't? Then I'll admit him and I'll keep him here for the night, but I don't think that's going to be necessary. This is not a replay of Jason's previous accident. But he's still unconscious. How can you know? CT scan came out normal. Doesn't appear to be any brain damage at all. And there's nothing like the cognitive loss that he suffered a decade ago. You know, well, would it help him if I were in there with him? It's hard to tell, but I would do it. Go on in. And it's still, it's a bump. It's a bad bump on the head, but that's all it is. He may not even have to be transferred to a room. Okay. Thanks. You have to wake up, Jason. Because you have to tell me what you were trying to say about AJ. You remembered something, didn't you? Tony was right. Jason will wake up in a matter of hours. Doesn't mean we're going to get him back. He will still be barely a shadow of the boy that we loved. It's a lot better than having to bury him. Actually, I'm, I'm really amazed at how resilient Jason is. I can't stop thinking about that night. A few days after the car crash. Jason was comatose. None of us expected him to live. And then his heart stopped. The one, the one night, nobody was with him. Thank God you were there to resuscitate him. But his brain was deprived of oxygen for several minutes. We will never know the amount of damage that did. Here, now, give it back to me. No, no, that's, that's AJ's it's, handwriting. It's private. Tell it. Please. What? This was written ten years ago. Oh, my God. Jason had little bits of memory from right after his accident with AJ. Somehow, he thinks that Dr. Thomas and AJ are connected. So he shot himself up? What was he thinking? Sonny, he was trying to help Michael. But you know, it's of Sonny, this whole thing could fit. Rachel Adair tells me she saw Dr. Thomas coming out of AJ's room the night that he died, and then a few hours later, she's found dead in her apartment with a stomach full of pills and a suicide note laying I mean, next to her confessing convenient aid. convenient time, man. It's, it's crazy. I mean, okay, let's just think for a second that Dr. Thomas killed A.J. Okay, why would Michael Shrink kill A.J.? Jason overheard a conversation. A nurse had contacted Dr. Thomas and said that A.J. wanted to speak to him and only him. He insisted on it. Okay, so let's just say that 
AJ and Dr. Thomas conspired to commit some crime ten years ago. Like what? I don't know that yet, but smash cut to April, and AJ's busted for kidnapping. So you're saying that he, he was already planning insanity defense? Right. All he needs is a doctor to sign off on it. So he goes back to his old pal, Asher Thomas, threatens to expose the crime they committed, and there you have a motive for murder. Shut AJ up. But Michael was a witness. He would have seen if it were Dr. Thomas, but he said it was Rachel who did it. Michael was hypnotized. What? So Dr. Thomas manufactured a murder suspect, and then he created his own eyewitness. You know the tape that you and Jason got from Dr. Thomas? Okay, what you hear it on is like, wake up, right? Then it gets a little static, and then you hear AJ's name. It's not hard to fill in the missing pieces. Well, don't strain yourselves. Why don't you just ask me?